Dobar dan svima i dobrodošli u Medija Centar u Čaglavici. Današnju debatu na temu pravosuđi građani Kosova organizuje Medija Centar uz podršku Američke ambasade u Prištini. Naši današnji panelisti, kojima još jednom želim dobrodošlicu, su gospodin Alberto Perduka, šef Odeljenja za pravosuđi u Eulexu, gospodin Steven Hill, šef pravne jedinice u Međunarodnoj civilnoj kancelariji i gospodin Živojn Jokanović, advokat. Bili su pozvani i iz Ministarstva za pravosuđe, ministarka Nekibe Kelmendi, međutim ona se nije odazvala našem pozivu, tako da ćemo bez njih uraditi debatu. Kao i uvek na samom početku čut ćemo izlaganja naših panelista, koja ne bi trebalo biti duža od sedam minuta. I najprej ćemo čuti gospodina Alberta Perduku. Gospodine, izvolite. Good morning to everybody. My name is Alberto Perduca. I'm the head of the justice component in ULEX. I thank you for the interest you show in ULEX mission and its action in justice field. As you know, exactly six months ago, ULEX mission started its operations after a long period of uncertainty due to the difficult international context. Uh, six months later, ULEX is no longer a project. ULEX is a reality, of course, an ongoing reality, but a concrete one that everybody can perceive and start to assess. Uh, justice component is a part of this concrete reality. Uh, so far, uh, justice component employed and deployed uh, all over Kosovo more than 190 international staff members and uh, 121 local staff. Uh, these staff work in several areas of justice, uh, namely in within the Ministry of Justice, in the Judiciary, in the Penitentiary Administration. We have legal experts that deal with the legislative process, that assist local institutions to deal with international legal cooperation. We have judges and prosecutors who work in different district courts, in the Supreme Court, and in different offices, prosecutorial offices. We have staff that work in the admi administration of uh, prisons. We have uh, legal experts that work in the Kosovo Judicial Council and in other organs and institutions. Just listing uh, these areas shows how wide uh, and different are the tasks that ULEX justice is called to fulfill. But uh, what keeps together all these uh, tasks, uh, whose variety is quite wide, and what gives consistency to these uh, tasks is the essence itself, itself of the mandate of ULEX in general and of its justice component in particular. The mandate, I try really to sum it in very few words, is to assist local institutions to establish and consolidate a system of administration of justice based on the rule of law principles. So the key word is rule of law. We all know that rule of law is a concept complex and multifaceted. Uh, I like to remember to myself, first of all, and to all my interlocutors, that uh, exactly 2,300 years ago, not far from here, some uh, hundreds of kilometers south of Kosovo, uh, a quite known uh, philosopher, the Greek Plato, was persuaded that if law is the master 
of the government, and the government is its slave, then the situation is full of promises, and all men, and I would say women, enjoy all the blessings that the gods shower on a stage. And a bit later, uh, the most uh, famous of his uh, students, the philosopher Aristotle, echoed uh, Plato, saying that the law should govern and those in power should be the servants of the laws. That's in a nutshell what was elaborated, I repeat, 2,400 years ago. We can just add the very few uh, briefly, uh, we are here on the basis of this rule of law concept to support local, in, local institutions to enact laws drafted in a transparent way and in common interests, to f help the local institutions to dispense a justice credible and respectful of the fundamental rights Third, to protect citizens from criminal powers to heal forth the wounds of the past. These are the, the four elements of uh, our uh, mandate under the label of rule of law. Coming to justice, and I, I, I go to come to an end, coming to justice, I would like just to stress one point, then we will can have a discussion during the debate. Uh, our judges, our, our prosecutors, so far around uh, 50. In the future, they will arrive to the ceiling of 70, around 70, are here not to administer a separate justice, a, an international justice in the traditional meaning we know, but to work within the local judiciary to help this local judiciary to dispense a more credible, a more effective, a more fair, a more impartial, a more multi-ethnic justice. Uh, so not a separate body, but a group, a team of judges and prosecutors that work with their local colleagues. Uh, they started to have hearings, just some figures, around 170 hearings have been already scheduled by our judges with their local colleagues. They have uh, already delivered some decisions. So the machine is, uh, has started to turn slowly. We have to increase the speed with the, with the help, the assistance of all the authorities of all the communities. Uh, but this is the challenge that is waiting for us for the, for the close future. Thanks for the attention. Ne, Perduka, gospodine Hilu, izvolite. Oh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me to this important event and this debate. It's a pleasure to uh, be able to speak with you and I look forward to our discussion. Let me just make a couple of comments from the perspective of ICO uh, about the justice system to complement what Mr. Perduka has just said about the goals. Uh, the theme that I wanted to highlight today in this debate and the theme that I hope uh, could get across to citizens is a theme of change in the judicial sector and the justice system. Uh, the message of change. Ever since for the past year, there have been a number of changes that are being introduced in the justice system that are designed to improve the justice system, to make it more efficient, to achieve its goals, but also to ensure that all citizens can participate in the justice system and use the justice system to defend their rights and to build uh, a functioning society based on the rule of law and respect for rights, including the rights of people from non-majority communities. Um, we've found that over the course of the year there have been some encouraging signs 
the most important one and perhaps most timely one is the establishment of the constitutional court that is underway right now. This court will be the guardian of the constitution uh, which contains extensive rights uh, that can be defended through the constitutional court. Uh, it will start operations within the next uh, the next few months. It has already been possible for citizens to file claims at the Constitutional Court now already for some months and it looks as if their claims are uh, indeed being lodged there. We expect um, that the composition of the court will be jurists of the highest caliber uh, and as you are aware there are two jurists at least from non-majority communities, including one uh, from the Serb community. Let's pass on to the process of um, vetting reappointment of judges in the system. There's a deep reform process underway there. There have been very encouraging signs from the IJPC, the Independent Judicial and Prosecutorial Council, uh, which is doing the judicial reappointment process in an attempt to raise ethical standards, professional standards, and set up a judiciary here that can take on the challenges uh, that face, uh, face us and will allow uh, citizens to protect, defend their own rights. Uh, in this connection, I'm pleased to note that there have been uh, very positive signs of a, of a, of a high number of uh, Serb applicants in the IJPC process so far, which is in its initial stages, but uh, there have been a number of, of Serb applicants and applicants who uh, are coming into the judicial system for the first time. That's extremely encouraging. As part of the process of decentralization, uh, there will be the possibility in the new municipalities and also in, in existing municipalities to request the creation of courts in those, those uh, municipalities. And there's a process set forth there. But the, these new municipalities and also existing municipalities where there's a, a majority uh, of, of uh, non-majority community members will have the right, and it's a right to request the creation of this court. Uh, a new ombudsperson has been appointed, not strictly speaking in the judiciary, but another institution that will be helpful in protecting rights. Uh, as I have been saying, the, the justice system is incredibly key to the process by which citizens can ensure that their rights are defended and that institutions are created that are based on the rule of law. Uh, coming from my country, I know that the courts have been the way in which many policies have been made, many policies have been advanced, and particularly the rights of minorities have been protected. You could really point it to the courts as the defender in large number of the rights of minorities. Um, and particularly in the context of Kosovo and in the context of the uh, comprehensive status settlement, the Adesari uh, proposal contains, uh, as you know, a number of protections uh, in the court system to ensure that the rights of minorities can be protected. Um, let me just conclude because I look forward to the discussion and also to hearing from our colleague from the, the bar, which is a key part of this process, uh, to encourage all citizens, uh, including from non-majority communities, to use the system. This, I was talking about a message of change, I was talking about protections that are built into the structures, but this will only work if citizens use them. So that would be my message uh, as well. Uh, finally, at least from our perspective, we uh, would like to point out that it the, the, it's, it's the institutions, this is a change in the international configuration as well. 
uh, it are the, it's the institutions that are ultimately responsible now for implementing these provisions. Um, so I can't highlight enough the importance to take advantage of these opportunities uh, and that exist and to try to make them work. So thank you very much for the, the opportunity. Pozdravljam se prisutne. Moji uvaženi prethodnici su dali jedan opšti osvrt i uvod ne samo na temu, nego na stanje koje na Kosovu za danas vlada i koji su primarni problemi na koje treba u buduće ovratiti pažnju. Ja ću vrlo kratko da učinim jedan osvrt obzirom da je tema široka i vrlo često vlada zabluda po kojoj kada se govori o pravosuđu misli se na sudove. Kada se govori o pravima često puta to svodimo na pravosudni sistem. E, za razliku od sudskog sistema pravosudni sistem je nešto širi po mom uverenju i shvatanju a pravo građana se ostvaruje ja bih rekao u posljednjoj i najvažnijoj instanciji to je stvarno sud. Međutim Da bi neko to pravo ostvario, postoji u filozofiji prava neka poslanica koja glasi od prilike, kaže, treba da je u pravu, da ume da ga ostvari i da ima pred kim. To znači da ima pred kim. Ja naglašavam baš to. A to je pred kim, treba da imamo ne samo sudove, a sudove prevaskodno, nego i druge organe. Ko su ti koji utiču na prava i ostvarijanje prava građana. Tu, pre svega, dok stignemo do suda, imamo sijaset organa. Organi lokalne administracije, uprave opština i tako dalje. Imate organe gonjenja ili policiju, jednu i drugu. Imate i vrhunski organ gonjenja, a to je tužilaštvo. Ako ti organi zataje, onda ne možemo pričati o pravu. Jer ono što stigne pred sud, ja bih vrlo odgovorno tvrdio da se ne kako tako, nego da se na čak, ja bih rekao, zadovoljavajući način okončava u sudskim institucijama. Mogu da vam kažem da sam za ovih deset godina radio lično u preko 360 krivičnih predmeta. Postoje tri odluke sa kojima nisam zadovoljan, ja i moji klijenti. To ne znači da su ljudi bili oslobođeni, nego da su shvatili i stepen odgovornosti i stepen zaštite društvenog dobra. Šta je suština? I gde se, uslovno rečeno, javlja nepravda i nezadovoljstvo? Ono se javlja kroz te prethodne organe ispred suda koji deluju. Ja ću vam reći jedan podatak. Mi imamo preko 1300, neću reći građana, nego namjerno kažem albanaca, ubijenih posle 2000. godine, za koje niško nije odgovarao do danas. Da ne govorim o 99. i 2000. kada je nestalo jako mnogo, veliki broj Srba, o čijoj sudini i danas ne znamo ništa, osim znamo da ih nema. Sve su to manjkavosti koje je u krajnjoj liniji govore o kvalitetu ili nekvalitetu jednog društvenog sistema, odnosno uređenja. Ja ću vam reći dve stvari. Da je sigurno da mi 99. godine, ili bolje reći početkom 2000. godine, nismo bili u prilici da imamo kvalitetne sudije, tužioce i tako dalje. Zašto? Iako se u samom početku 99. godine uključilo desetak Srba u tužilaštvu i sudovima. Oni su lagano iščezli. Ne kritikujem nikoga, na to je utisala opšta klima, sigurno, i dobrim delom neko nerazumevanje. Nedovoljno razumevanje. Međutim, danas, nadam se, a iz izlaganja mog prethodnika, čuli ste da se poveći broj Srba javlja da se uključi u pravosudni sistem u pravosuđe Kosova. Ono na što moramo posebno obratiti pažnju 
jeste organizacija uprave i zaštita danas već u krivično-pravnom smislu srpska populacija nije bitno ugrožena ili nije ugrožena. Možda je malo grubo rečeno nije ugrožena. Slažem se da su ograničena kretanja, da još psihički nismo prelomili da u pojedine delove Kosova ne stiže niko i mogu da vam kažem da sam jedini Srbi, jedini advokat koji je ušao u sve sudove na Kosovo. I dan danas. Ima nešto tu što nije još u redu, ali mogu sa sigurnošću da tvrdim da je iz dana u dan stanje bolje i bolje. Šta je centralni problem kod zaštite prava nealbanaca, govorim nealbanaca, ne slučajno nego namjerno, a to je imovinska prava i imovinski zahtev. Mi za deset godina nismo uspjeli da vratimo ni 60, ni 50% imovine nealbanaca njima na raspolaganju. A ako kažem da je 50% rešeno, to je rešeno vrlo traljavo i nikako ili kompromisno otuđili su, prodali su imovinu zbog stanja u kome su se našli. Ali nije to ona klasična, voljna, voljni promet, nego iznuđeni promet. Ako to imamo u vidu, pred budućim organima i Skupštinom Kosova prevashodno, stoje ozbiljni zadaci da se u tom pravcu čini mnogo više nego što je do sada. Ako to ne ostvarimo, imat ćemo mi na sudovima procesuirane neke predmete, a ja očekujem da pravosuđe Kosova krene uskodno, jer sada i iz reda Albanaca, a iz reda Srba također, imamo mogućnosti da dobijemo stvarno kvalitet. Ja nisam sudija, nisam tužilac, ali moram da vam kažem da je materijalni položaj sudija i tužilaca nikakav. I da je to razlog zato što ne možemo da očuvamo ili da formiramo kvalitetan kadar. Koliko je bitno da se u pravosudje Kosova uključe, ja kažem, stručni ljudi. I za toga podrazujem hrabri, stručno hrabri. Ne treba neko junaštvo, ali znate, neznalica on je i kukavica uvek. Prema tome, nužno je stvoriti dobar kadar. Kosovu po meni nedostaje još jedna stvar. Nedostaje Kosovu Kosovo. Zbog toga što policija i pojedini drugi organi čini mi se da su podeljeni na nekakve vilajete ili kamo sreće da su bar onove zone odgovornosti. Nego ih ima više. Odakle sam ja kao lider, onda imam svoju regiju, odakle regrutujem pod nekakvim uticajem mojim ili mojih istomišljenika. Ako ne budemo imali kosovsku policiju, kosovsko pravosuđe, možemo tapkati u mestu još dugo i dugo. Ja ću da skratim jer rečeno mi je da 5-6 minuta, 7 koliko li, zaključit ću samo sa ovim. Mi nismo u početku stvaranja nekakvog prava. Imali smo vrlo razvijeno pravo evropskog nivoa. Desilo se što se desilo. Pravosudni sistem i zakone koji su vadali na ovom području sigurno je trebalo modifikovati. Ali ne do tog stepena da mi danas imamo zakone koje ne možemo da istumačimo, ne umemo da primenimo, jer su nedorečeni i nejasni. Nužno je, znači, i normativnu delatnost ozbiljno staviti pod lup. Ja neću da iznosim pojedine primere, ali imate, da ne kažem šta, mnogo smetnji, mnogo poteškoća. To se događa na području gde je pre 700 godina i 600 godina bilo pisanih zakona od Leke Dukaćinija preko još starijeg cara Dušana i tako dalje. Mi nismo populacija ni sredina kojoj treba stvarati, sigurno treba nadomestiti i usavršiti. Moramo se osloboditi nečega što se zove prošlost. Meni je smešno da u Ustavu i u Ustavnom okviru piše nekakva društvena svojina. Molim vas, kategorija društvene svojine je prevaziđena svojina, to je vezano za sistem samoupravljanja, za socijalizam. Nema društvene svojine u jednoj uređenoj državi u smislu stvaranja države i prava kome težimo. To važi i za Srbiju sigurno koliko i za ovaj prostor. Dakle, oslobađati se od nekih tereta prošlosti nužno je, ali ne tako bezglavo. 
Jer mi imamo i jedan i drugi jezik, govorimo ovde i jedan i drugi, govorimo o albanskom jeziku, govorimo o srpskom jeziku, koji su vrlo bogati i kojima se može izraziti najtananije ono što se želi ostvariti. Oprostite i hvala. Hvala gospodine Jukanoviću, hvala i ostalima na izlaganju. Sada ćemo čuti pitanja novinara, ako ima. Violeta Matović, kim radio? Gospodine Perduka, kratko i jasno, otvarate li sud u Južnoj Mitrovici ili ne? I, there are some other questions, or I can reply immediately to, the, to this uh, uh, question. Well, uh, our mandate as ULEX is uh, all over Kosovo, worldwide Kosovo. And consistently, since the first very day of our operation deployment, uh, ULEX decided to uh, deploy some uh, judges and prosecutors in the Mitrovica courthouse, as uh, we did uh, for the other district courts and district prosecution offices. Of course, uh, we were and we are and you are well aware that the situation in Mitrovica uh, courthouse is not the same as the situation that we have in the other district courts. Uh, we can never uh, forget that this courthouse was uh, left 10 months before, and uh, since uh, end of February, beginning of March 2008, there was no substantial judicial activity in the courthouse. So our judges and prosecutors entered into the into an empty and totally inactive courthouse. Uh, it's clear that uh, four judges and two international judges and two international prosecutors coming from ULEX could not and cannot administer uh, a normal justice in the area. They could not give an answer, a satisfactory answer to the demand of justice. Uh, what is needed is that judiciary of both communities start to work in the courthouse uh, with the assistance of, uh, of ULEX. That's our goal, that's our project, to uh, find a practical solution that can allow restoring the functioning of the courthouse. And for that, uh, we uh, proposed to both parties to work on a project, to work on managing a set of urgent criminal cases that are waiting for a trial for months, in some cases for years. And when I say uh, trials waiting for a try, uh, cases waiting for a trial. I'm referring to people who are in detention for months and some cases for years. That has nothing to do with the rule of law principles. That is against the rule of law principles. And for that, we are strongly committed to find a way to restart the Mitrovica courthouse working and dealing, at least in the first step, with such old cases. This, and I come to your, to your question. This is our uh, project, this is our goal, and we, work, we have to work on this. All the rest uh, goes beyond our competences. I am preparing Ms. Sufi from Alsat Television. Mr. Perduka, we have some days ago a court file open to the two Kosovo Serb leaders in the north, Mr. Milan Ivanovic and Mr. Marko Jakšić. Is ULEX prosecution involved in this case, and how do you consider this move? Thank you for, for, the, for, for the question that gives, us, gives me the opportunity to, to explain the mechanism, how our ULEX judges and prosecutors can be involved in cases. Uh, there are rules, there are principles, there are procedures. Uh, for some serious crimes, war crimes, terrorism, organized crime, financial uh, crimes, and namely money laundering, there is an exclusive of, if you like, primary competence for our prosecutors. So we have no choice, no option 
whenever we, our prosecutors receive an information related to such alleged crimes, they have to deal with such cases. In some other case, and, and whenever uh, there is a ULEX prosecutor that is competent for such cases, a ULEX judge has to deal with such cases at trial level. There are some other, uh, for some other criminal offenses, serious but less serious than war crimes, terrorism, organized crime, and money laundry, where there is a so called subsidiary uh, competence. That means that, as a matter of principle, uh, it's to Kosovo judges and prosecutors to deal with such cases, but under certain conditions, in the interests of the uh, a fair administration of justice, uh, ULEC judges and prosecutors can take over such cases. So uh, I, I, I cannot answer you, uh, give you an answer on the cases you quoted. I, I would like just to say that our judges and prosecutors will follow these rules. So, in the cases you quoted, if uh, there is a, a, a space for a primary competence, the case will be dealt by our prosecutors. If, on the contrary, the, the, crimin the alleged criminal offence is related to some other uh, criminal provisions, uh, less serious crimes, uh, it's to our prosecutors, to our judges, to decide whether it would be in the interest of the justice to take over the case. So far, I have no information uh, of any decision on, on this. Are you dealing with this case or not? Um, I, I repeat, uh, not now. Uh, it's, it's, it's to judges and prosecutors to decide whether conditions are met in these specific cases take into account the specificities, the, the factual elements, if there is a, a space, a margin, to deal with such cases or not. But I'm not still, uh, not yet in a position to tell anything uh, for, for sure on that. So, the production of the Morbringa Television in Klan Kosova. I have been in the Communal and Vostri, who functions in the Gjukata Charko and Mitrovicas. I have been in the Dome with Vogel Sekia, është vendosur krejt gjykata, krejt kontor të gjykatës, gjyqtar. Uh, sorry. Could you repeat again? Mr. Just, okay. Just sorry. You start again because we lost. Zotë i preduka, dje kam qenë në gjykatën e qarku në gjykatën komunale në vështri. Atje funksionat gjykatën e qarku e Mitrovicës. Në një dhom matë vogël se, këto, se kjo punoj 23 veta. Mesin e tyre ka gjyshtar, administrator, referenta dhe punëtor tjerë, brenda një dhome. Ata presin për gjdo qas nuk thynë vendin e tyre të punës, sepse kushtet janë mizere, janë të patolerushme, bilë si dëmos këto ditë vere. Nuk e dija këni qena, e këni pa ju atë at gjendje. Uh, a mund të ju jep një një shpres të ju në punëtorve që të kthejhen, a i një të punua, Nga drejtim, kur këta, këta rinë me, me vesh se një dit shumë shpejt do të kthejen, ta për gjithë moment presin që të kthejen në vendet tyre dhe thojnë se siguria nuk është problem, sepse ne kemi punua edhe për para dhe nuk, ne nuk shohem këtë si problem. Qëfar mund të ju thoni, qëfar mund të ju thoni këtyne punëtorve? Okay, thank you for the, for the question. I, 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 know, I know very well the conditions where... Uh, Judges, prosecutors, and the ministry staff work in uh, in Vustri. Uh, I've been uh, there sometimes. I talked with uh, the president uh, Baruti, uh, so I, I I know the situation and I know the, the issue. Uh, what we can do as ULEX is to work in order to restart the functioning of the Mitrovica courthouse, uh, and we think that a good start. For this, of this process would be to call judiciary of both communities to work on a, a package, a set of urgent criminal cases where I repeat there are several people that wait for a trial uh, in a provisional detention. Uh, we think that this, is, this, this could be a, a good start. Our judges and prosecutors entering into the courthouse in December 2008 
they start to deal with some cases. They, um, they held uh, two trials. They delivered uh, final decisions. Now they are committed to, 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 to deal, to, hell, to hold a, a third trial. So uh, something is moving. But we are fully aware that this is not enough. Uh, and our judges and prosecutors could not uh, manage all the urgent cases by their own, alone. They need the involvement, the assistance, the cooperation of judges and prosecutors coming from both communities. Uh, we think that it's a justice to be effective needs uh, several, that several conditions be met. And among these conditions, we think that a minimum consent coming from the civil society, from the public opinion, from the population is absolutely needed. People have to, to, to perceive this justice as their justice, not something imposed. And for that, we are working in order to, real, to, to collect and do all the existing resources and to make them working together, but in the Mitrovica courthouse. Goran Avramović, Glas Juga, Kim Radio. Pitanje za gospodina Perduku i gospodina Hila. Prosto me interesuju stavovi organizacija ispred kojih oni dolaze. Gospodin Ivan Čukalović je izabran za sudiju Ustavnog suda Kosova. On dolaze iz Kragujeca, sticam prilika, ja sam u tom gradu rođen. Prvo dobro poznajem situaciju na pravnom fakultetu na kom je on predavao. Čovjek je optužen, znači naglašavam optužen, za učešće u aferi indeks. Za slučaj da ne znate o čemu se radi, probat ću da vam približim to jednom rečenicom. Prodavao je ispite studentima, odnosno prelazne ocene za novac. Da li mislite da imenovanje takvog čoveka za sudiju Ustavnog suda ovde može da predstavlja problem? Hvala vam. Da li mislite da je imenovanje čoveka koji je u Srbiji optužen da je studentima prodavao ocene za sudiju Ustavnog suda na Kosovu, a vi predstavljate koliko sam shvatio pravo, može da predstavlja problem? Ako je tamo prodavao ispite, šta će ovde da radi? Tamo je bio samo profesor na fakultetu ovde sudije Ustavnog suda, zaboga. Listen, I will be very frank uh, with you and we, with, with all of you. Uh, as I work as a judge and prosecutor uh, for 20 years in my country, I used to make assessment on facts, on evidence, and not just on rumors. I'm sorry, I have no authority and I'm not in a position to make any comment on the issue you raised. <laughs> Just the system. That's not a rumor. Come on. You don't speak about uh, Yes. Uh, if you tell me that he, this person is accused, I trust in you. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, may I uh, remind that being accused is not, does not equal to be guilty. Yes. There is a, a principle, again, based on the rule of law concept, that obliges us to think that a person is presumed innocent until proved guilty. This is in general terms. Then, with regard to, to, to the case you, you mentioned, frankly, I, I have no authority uh, to make any comments, and I have no competence as, as a, a responsible for justice component in ULEX and as a member of ULEX in such field. Um, there, it would be unfair from, from my side to make any observation on, on this issue. Thank you. Je to nusliv Gazeta Express. Za te predvuca Jan Bojtur. Ok. Can I start it? Ok. You see, you can, but... Jan Bojtur, du provim et etikas të organizuar nga këshili i pavarë gjyësorë dhe prokurorjali i Kosovës. Një pjesë e gjyësorëve dhe prokurorëve kanë ropë i këti provimi, 
tetikës, në mesin e tyre është edhe zëvendës kryeprokurori i Kosovës. Po me gjitha të, ata du të vazhdojnë të punojnë edhe për një vetë. Si ka mundë si që kjo të funksionoj kështu, ata s'kanë qenë gjendjet japë një provim e tike edhe me vazhdojnë të punojnë edhe për një vetë. Uh, again, sorry, uh, I don't want to deceive you, but I have no answer on this. Uh, the process of vetting, the vetting process, sorry, uh, is, is, uh, is dealt by an international uh, committee. Uh, rules and procedure were established. Uh, remedies uh, were established. If uh, people have been, uh, as some of judges and prosecutors have been excluded uh, and they didn't pass these exams, they will have the opportunity to, to, to file a complaint. And uh, I think, just as a general observation, that there is, we have the interest that this vetting process be done and be concluded, first of all, in a fair and in a relatively quick way. It's the interest, interest of the, as a general, uh, a general consideration, observation, it's the interest of Kosovo justice that this be done in a fair, acceptable, uh, and also fast, relatively fast way. Uh, I think that there is no interest for anybody that this vetting process be perceived as something unfair. Uh, and so I am quite confident that the institution charged with this vetting process, so this International Judicial and Prosecutorial Committee, be in a position to, uh, to give an answer to these initial uh, issues, a fair and persuasive answer. So um, let this committee work and let's wait that they do their job and we'll see uh, at the end the outcome of this exercise and we will be in a better position to make an assessment on the overall exercise. I fully understand uh, the, the, the concern of, 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 and the, the anguish uh, uh, of, uh, of, of people who are, who are concerned who didn't pass the exam. But we have to, 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 to have a general vision of this exercise. Uh, this is an exercise, this vetting is bound to, 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 to help the future development of justice, of course, of justice. Uh, sorry, can I just, just uh, again, just to follow, because um, I think the, you, you missed my point, or maybe the translator is not. But um, my, my uh, intention is, um, Everyone from, from us is uh, agree that we need a completely a different judicial system and so on. My question is, how is possible that the man who cannot uh, uh, pass the test, uh, he's continued to, he should work uh, for, for one, one year? I mean... Well, there is a procedure at the uh, because... Uh, you have also to take into, into account that uh, uh, there can be remedies to the first decision to exclude this, this person. So I, I think it, this, this procedure takes time uh, before taking a final decision to, to, uh, to expulse this person from the, the exercise of judicial or prosecutorial functions. So I, I, I understand that we would like, we all would like to have uh, everything clear uh, and immediately clear. But it's a complex procedure, and please give to the, to, the, to the committee the time to do its job and to take a final decision. Because uh, I think that we, we cannot expect and demand from this uh, committee to take uh, fair and immediate decisions in the meantime, to take fair decisions with, a, with very heavy consequences of life and on professional life of people, time is needed to any of us, including this committee. Sorry, this is my position. 
Ako dopustite da se uključi. Hteo bih, ne u prilog odbrane kolega koji nisu prošli taj test. Imate dve stvari. Ima zakon o izboru i imenovanju sudija. I to je zakon. Ovaj test je prvi put uveden sada, nekom je palo na pamet da eto, da nam da jedan presek stanja, jednu sliku o čemu se radi. Ja vam odgovorno tvrdim da znam skoro sve te sudije i koji su prošli i koji nisu, jer sam osam godina bio član sudsko-tužilačkog veća. I vodili smo disciplinske i sve postupke. Ali ćete dozvoliti nešto drugo. Ja imam već 56 godina vozačku dozvolu. Srećom, nikoga nisam usmrtio, niko nije zadobio tešku telesnu povredu. Bilo je nekih češanja, banalnih. Ali sad kad bi ja izašao na test, Sa ovima koji polažu danas, ja bi bio sigurno slabiji od njih. Jer u moje vreme nije ni bilo testa, nego smo polagali onako direktno pitanje i tako dalje. Prema tome, mi imamo zaista jedan atak na ličnosti tih sudija. Ako ih sad pozovete da polože, a vi imate tamo tri odgovora, od kojih su sva tri moguća, onda su slične. To vam isto kao ono, da li skrećati levu ili desno, ako je znak, ako nije znak, Može ovo, ne može. Vreme je bilo ograničeno, ljudi nisu pripremani, niko nije dao nikakva pitanja unapred, verovatno da to treba na neki i ljudski i zakonit način razrešiti. Siguran sam da među tima koji nisu položili ispit, ima vrstnih sudija koji su u praksi i etičari i stručnjaci. Dobri, hvala i oprosite. Pitanje za gospodina Hila. Koje mekanizme će ICO koristiti ukoliko se ne poštoje ustav Kosova, odnosno aktisarijev plan? Hvala vam za pitanje. Znači, u aktisari paketu i u konstituciju, ICO je zmenjeno, da je 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 da je. Um, part of that is closely following what's happening, so that's the first mechanism. Uh, watching carefully, which we do, we very carefully monitor what's happening. Uh, if we identify that there's a failure to implement the plan or a violation of the plan, as you're talking about, there are the possibility in the Adesari plan of taking a variety of corrective measures. And you can see it in the plan, it talks about um, uh, every kind of corrective measure to ensure that the plan is implemented. So there's a wide variety of things. Um, now, of course, the idea is to not reach that phase. The idea is to ensure that the plan is implemented. Um, but be sure that we are closely watching and uh, we will not hesitate uh, to use the powers that are provided for us in the plan if there's the necessi necessity to do so. Ja sam Andrija Egić, dopisnik televizije VDV2 od Audi. Za gospodine Perduku, zanima me, izvinjam se unapred ako nisam obavešten, koliko je Eoleks i da li je uopšte uključen oko suzbijanja korupcije u kosovskom pravosuđu? For the question, we know that corruption is a crucial issue. If you go through the joint action, sorry, thanks for the question. Um, corruption is a crucial issue. If you go through the joint action that the 27 member states of the European Union adopted when they decided to launch a ULEX mission, uh, you will see uh, that uh, the fight against corruption is one or of uh, the main goals uh, of the mission or the mandate of the mission itself. So consistently, uh, we are committed uh, not, to, not to eradicate corruption. We cannot make any illusion to anybody. We have to fight against corruption in order to minimize this phenomenon. And uh, uh, for that, 
corruption at judicial level is one of the, these uh, uh, criminal offenses for which it's possible for ULEX judges and prosecutors to take over the cases when uh, it is assessed that local judiciary now is not in a position to deal with such cases properly. So, uh, our judges and prosecutors, under certain conditions, legal conditions, may deal with cases of uh, corruption and in some way to contribute to a more effective fight uh, against this phenomenon. Uh, there is uh, also uh, a second major field where ULEX is committed and it is at legislative uh, level. We all know that uh, in order to fight corruption effectively, we need, we need many means, not just one. We, have, we need good, uh, ULEX, uh, good judges and prosecutors. We, have, we need good legislation. We, we need a, 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 a strong cooperation from civil society. We have to improve the ethics among all uh, the public officials. So there are many, 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 uh, many conditions, many factors that contribute to obtain an effective fight against corruption. Uh, at legislative level, we have some legal experts that work within the legislative department of the Minister of Justice, and they contribute, they work in order to facilitate the drafting of good laws bound to, 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 to give a, a stronger answer to, against corruption. So uh, we, we work at judicial level and legislative level in order to create a, an arsenal of instruments that be more effective and strong against uh, corruption. Um, I think that we, can, we, we, we will be in a position to make an assessment of this commitment or the eff effectiveness of this commitment in, in the future as we have just started. There are some uh, cases where our prosecutors work together with local colleagues, following the rules of the subsidiary competency that I mentioned before. Um, per zotin Hill, um, kur do t'i publikoni emrat e gjyhtarve gjykatës kushtetuse edhe sepse kam betur gjithë gjykata kushtetuse pengi i, i emrave që ju do t'i dërshdoni misioni ICOS? I'll give you a very simple answer, very soon, very, very soon. I mean, within the next, uh, within the, the next uh, few days. Uh, if you allow me, I would like to put a question to, to re the representative of the bar. Of the bar. Um, because, of course, as a responsible for justice, I'm very interested to, to get the perception and uh, from uh, uh, from uh, the stakeholders, uh, the relevant stakeholders. So uh, you, you, are, you, are a, you are a barrister, you are a, a, a lawyer. Uh, what do you expect from uh, ULEX judges and prosecutors? Uh, what you expect from them in order to, uh, to have a system more effective, more fair, uh, more respectful of fundamental rights. So, if you have to, to, to file a request, a general request, to ULEX judiciary, what would be the content of this request? Thanks. Da odmah napomenem, ja sam advokat i slobodne profesije, registrovan u advokatskoj komori Kosova. Nisam predsjednik, ni predstavnik komore. Ne predstavlja ni Srbe, ni Albance, ni komoru, nikoga ne predstavlja. Ja sam samo ja. 
Ako neko može imati autonomiju, da predstavlja jedan čovjek autonomiju, onda sam ja autonomija ili država za sebe. Niko me ne finansira, niko me ne pomaže, niko me ne polažem račun. Svem svojoj savesti. Deset godina radim, nikada nisam naplatio nijednu odbranu od bivše institucije UNMIK-a, niti od EULEX-a, niti iz budžeta Kosova. Srbi nemaju para da ne plati, ja živim od jedne penzije koju sam nekad zaradio, jer imam 56 godina staža i 20 godina još starosti iznad toga. Prema tome, odgovorit ću na ovo pitanje. Da bi smo, i šta se očekuje od Eulekse, kako sam ja to doživao? Prvo, mislim da je sretnije rešenje jer smo bliži Evropi nego što smo bili svetu. Jer smo imali ljude iz 40 totalno različitih pravnih sistema. Imali smo ljude iz sistema koji su osuđivali nekoga na 770 godina. Ja bih volao da me osude, ali da ih izdrži. Imali smo iz sistema, imali smo presude u kojima piše da je za maloletnika najmanja kazna 10 godina za teško krivično delo. U stvari to je najveća kazna i tako dalje. Evropa je mnogo bliska nama. Ja sam nešto rekao da su propisi koji su vladali do dolaska ove misije, nisu to bili ni srpski, pa čak ni jugoslovenski, iako je bilo bivših šest republika i dve pokrajine i tako dalje. To je bio skup evropskog civilizacijskog znanja, mudrosti, pravne mudrosti. Francusko, austro-ugarsko, svetsko pravo je inkorporirano bilo u te propise. Mi smo sad došli u situaciju da se vraćamo 700 godina unazad. Ko je znao sličan staroslovenskom srpski jezik i čita Dušanov zakonik, ne mora da čita, može da mu čita neko ko zna da čita, a ko zna da sluša, zna tačno šta je Dušan zabranio. Kanoni je leke dukađinije, pre 600 godina. Bio je toliko jasan, a mi sad napravimo zakon, pa sedne veće, pa sedne deset pravnika i ne mogu da istumače, da daju stav Kako zauzeti? Ono što očekuje, pre svega, da se izvrši dobra i temeljita revizija propisa koje smo brzometno i nepotrebno donosili. Brzometno i nepotrebno. Nisu u pitanju jezičke barijere, koliko su u pitanju suštinske izmene. Ako to ne uradimo, nećemo mnogo odmaći od problema u kojima smo. Drugo, sigurno je da Sad, rekao sam malo pre da imamo mogućnosti da izvršimo izbor sudija, kvalitetne sudije dobijemo. To nismo imali, recimo, ako je neko deset godina bio van pravosudnog sistema, van propisa, van ovoga, od jedan postaje sudije. To sad možemo učiniti s tim što bi normalno trebalo povećati, poboljšati materijalni položaj tu sudija i njihov nivo. Dozvolit ćete, ulazi se u sudnicu i u predsudiju kao u kafanu, čak u kafani konobara poštujete, bo kažete dobar dan. Ovo je dolazi, deplasirana je autoritet sudije. Ja ću vam reći da je zakon o imunitetu sudijama. Kaže, u toku vršenja službene dužnosti. Pa zar sudija nije na ulici sudija? Zar na ulici smem da ga psuje? Pazite, mora društvena uloga, društveni nivo sudije da se digne na jedan zavidan pjedestal. Nažalost, kako smo mi shvatili demokratiju, koju slušamo, valjda sam da se to prenosi iz skupštinskih sala, nije to demokratija. Ako govorimo o demokratiji, demokratiju neka sprovodi skupština, zakonodavac neka sprovodi demokratiju. A sudi, kod sudije nema demokratije. Kakva demokratija? Primjena zakona. Kakva demokratija je u policiji? Zakon će da propiše prava moja kao građanina. A ako se ona je ogreši, to je to. A neće uvojiti demokratske dijaloge u policijskom pritvoru ili ne znam gde. Zna se šta je. Tu mi mešamo malo pojmove. Dalje, očekujem da se neke stvari uproste. Primjera radi. Izmislili smo sad, ako treba da uzmete izvod umrlih ili rođenih, treba neko da vam da puno moći. Kosovo je preplavljeno falsifikatima. Ljudi koji su umrli pre 10 godina, 12 godina, valjda ih puštaju od ozgona na vikend, dođu i prodaju kuću, prodaju imanje. To je živi cirkus. Uvedena je praksa da se recimo advokatu traži punomoće. 
da mu neko overi punomoće. I to overavaju. Podgorica, Ulcin, Jagodina i ne znam koji sudovi sve ne overavaju. Ja sam neki dan imao punomoće gde piše opštinski sud Rakovica. Molim vas, od kad postoji Rakovica, nikad nije postoji opštinski sud Rakovica. Ali ima original, pečat, grb Srbije, sve je okej. I u jednom sudu je to prošlo ovde kod nas na Kosovu. Pa prošlo je zato što referent za overu, potpise, rukopise, ne znam. Zašto tražiti, to je glupost jedna notorna, tu smo pomogli upravo ono, korupciju, mito, protekcionizam, zašto advokatu tražiti punomoći, gospodo? Kada meni neko donese overeno punomoći, či ja napravim promet nekakav ili napravim nešto što napravim i ne može da me pozove tužilas na odgovornost. Zašto? Ja sam dobio punomoći overeno, ne znam ja koja je stranka. A ako bi ja sačinio sa mojim faksimilom, ja sam onda odgovoran. Znamo koga treba goniti. A ovako ne znamo. Doneo mi jedan plavi kočin u crvenih cipela za vaše posto. Dakle, mnoge stvari treba uraditi da se približi. Kako odgovoriti na pitanje za deset posto nešto da vratimo imovi? Nije tačno. Ja ću donositi za deset dana to rešenje. Garantujem koja će biti zakonita. Zašto? Ako ja kažem da ova njiva nije moja, da je nisam kupio, šta ima da, kakav postupak da se vodi da me dislocira neko? Ne treba postupak. Jednostavno naložiti udaljenje, to važi za stan, to važi za poslovni prostor. A šta mi radimo? Ja vam tvrdim da je HPD, sadašnja agencija za imovinu Kosova, njen prethodnik, napravio više materijalnog zla ne Albancima, nego svi Albanci Kosova ne računujući 17. godine. Marta. Bez 17. marta. Zašto? Oni, vi date saglasnost da vam neko izda tamo stan. Date perfektno opremljen stan. Oni ga izdaju ili ne izdaju, šta rade, ne znam. Ne popišu stvari. Kad uđete u stan, umesto nameštaja, poskidani parket. Ne dobijete ime kome su ga izdavali. Nemate nikakve zaštite u suštini. To su ona prava o kojima treba voditi računa. Inače, da li ćemo mi za krađe, za ovo, mi političke delikvencije skoro da nemamo. Imamo zla koja nas prate. To su prateće zla, tokovi civilizacije, droga, stigla u osnovne škole i tako dalje. Kosovu ne treba nikakav TNK ni zaštitni korpus. Ja to tvrdi, nikakva mu vojska ne treba, ali treba mu dobra policija. I da bude policija centralno organizovano, da je samo policajac, a da ne, nije petski policajac ili Vučitrnski. Imate drugu stvar. U Vučitrnu, molim vas, to je haos. Šta je sa važanjem isprava? Ko može da izda pastoš koji važi u svetu? Sem organi Srbije. Lične karte, uslovno rečeno, srpske lične karte. I pastoše izdaju izmešteni organi Srbije po rezoluciji 1244, oni su samo izmešteni. Eno ih rade u Nišu, rade u Kraljevu, rade, ne znam, u Prokuplju i tako dalje. Šta se događa? I Albanci i Srbi uzimamo tamo i lične karte i, ne znam, pasoše i ostalo. Ako mi da vozačku dozvolu, u Vučitrnu oduzimaju. Kaže, to ti je izdao paralelni organ. Koji je paralelni organ? Pazite, to su stvari koje treba razrešiti na nivou. Ili uzmite, recimo, ja sam potpredsednik Crnog krsta Srbije. Moje vozače, ne moje, nego Crnog krsta, ja nisam profesionalac, nisam činovnik, nego sam funkcioner u Crnom krstu, zaustavljaju i oduzimaju na kantu nafte od 20 litara. Po našem upustvu, rezervar goriva i kanta ima 20 litara za slučaj da stane, da bilo šta, oduzima nam policija kao da sprečavaju nekakav težak kriminal. A kriminal cveta. Da vas ne mučim, ja bih mogao o tome da pričam do sutra ujutru, ali suština je da moramo raščistiti šta je to što važi, koji postupaj za... Molim vas, kom je treba izvod umrlih mlađi od šest meseci? Zašto? Zar neće umreti ponovo, za Boga? mnoge gluposti nas opterećuju. Vi ne možete da uzmete posjedovni list ako vam je neko preveo na falsifikovanu dokumentaciju, preveo imovinu na sebe. I vi osje da ga tužite, tražite posjedovni list da je na njegovo ime, kaže donesete punomoće. Pa kako ide da mi da on punomoće? Skratit ću, možemo pričati o tome danima, ali mislim da treba napraviti sistem, mera i uraditi prioritete šta menjati u temelju.
Ovim bismo završili današnju debatu. Hvala vam svima što ste bili.